Welcome to part two of creating a useful editor tool with Unity's UI toolkit. We'll start off by opening the script we created last episode, which is this image alpha editor C sharp script. And we'll begin by removing start and update method. Instead of mono behavior, we're going to inherit from editor window. Next, I'm going to put in a namespace. I'm just going to use NS, which uses the initials for my business, but you can put whatever. This set as a tool has been recently accepted onto the asset stores. So part of the practice for submission is actually including your scripts in a namespace. So that's why mine's under my business name. So now and then I'm just going to add some tidbits if you've ever been interested in releasing any of your editor tools on the asset store. I'm just going to copy paste some sections as we go. It'll just be a lot faster and you don't have to put up with the click clack of the keyboard. So next we'll just update the top for the libraries we're using. Naturally, we're using Unity Editor, Unity Editor UI Elements and Unity Engine UI Elements. And we're making sure that any instance where we use the word object, we're referring to Unity Engine's object. Feel free to just pause the video at any time to just copy this code down. Actually, I'll just zoom it in a bit. Next up will be the fields where we will hold a reference to all the elements we've created in our UI document. There are quite a lot of them and the reason we named them in UI Builder will become apparent later. Next will be our first method, which will allow us to open our editor window. This menu item attribute of the top here allows us to add a menu item to the main menu. And this string parameter here allows us to specify where that item will be located. So for us, the menu item is image alpha editor and it will be located in a section called Tools. We are placing it in a section called Tools as this allows us to be compliant with Unity's publishing guidelines if you've ever wanted to distribute a, an editor tool on the Unity Asset Store. In these last two lines of code, we are just setting the size of the window. If you remember back in UI Builder, we set a width for our preview window to be 320 pixels by 550 pixels. Eventually, we're going to reduce the height to 520 because we'll be hiding some of our elements that we have on our add-on window. We are setting the window's minimum size to be the same as its maximum size, as this allows it to prevent the window from being resized. So if you save this file now and go back into Unity, and we choose Image Alpha Editor from the Tools menu, you should have this editor window here that just cannot be resized. Okay, next we'll create a method called create GUI and we'll create a reference to our root visual element. So visual element of root equals root visual element. Next we'll create a variable called visual tree. which we will assign to our UI document that we created. We will do this by asset database dot load asset at path. And as type is going to be a visual tree asset. In the parentheses, we're just going to supply it a path to our UI document. So we'll go back to unity and in resources, UI documents, you'll click on our UI document right click and then copy the path back to the script we will just paste that in between the quotations then we'll create a visual element which we will call tree and we'll assign that to our visual tree being instantiated and lastly we will add that tree to our root visual element 
we save this and go back to Unity. When we open our Image Alpha Editor tool, it should now look like this. While we're at it, we may as well edit these starting values for the width, height, and the alpha. So go into UI Builder for your UI document for that. And on the width field, we'll set the value to uh, something more generic like 100 and height to 100. And alpha input, set that to 255. Okay, save this. And we'll go back to our script. In this next part, we're going to be assigning our elements. So you can see that we're using the queue method, which is just shorthand for query. And it allows us to return a elements of a specified type with a specified name, which is why we were naming several of our elements within UI Builder. Although you can see that for a couple of them, I have not supplied a name because there is only one gradient field and there is only one integer slider in the UI document. And lastly, to finish off this method, we will be assigning our callbacks. So as you can see, there's a lot of red squiggly line things happening here. So if you have Visual Studio or Rider, you can press Alt Enter. Or if you're on a Mac, you would be Command Enter. And then you would just select Create Method. So go through and create all the following methods in this manner. And by creating the methods in this manner, you can see that all of the parameters required have also been automatically populated. So I'm just going to go through and delete these throw not implemented exceptions. should be able to see the correlation that this register value change callback generic method has with the methods that we have created. So this texture selected method, which we created automatically, is related to a property in texture field called value, which is a type of object. So I'll just demonstrate this here. So texture field dot value can see here value is a type of object and this is a unity engine object which we specified at the top of our script so whenever this value changes it will invoke the texture selected callback okay that rounds off this episode i'll see you in the next one where we start actually implementing some of the functionality for our editor window. Stay tuned till then. I'll catch you later. Peace.